Yes, sir. Tell me how Umbaugh started. How did Umbaugh start? <clears throat> well, um, I would say back in 2018, I just started my second company. It's called Platinum Concrete Cutting. I could not afford to grow the business. I mean, I obviously bought a piece of equipment or two and grew it. They got really stagnant and I got a little frustrated, couldn't grow. And at the time I was doing YouTube videos and I was like always posting, hey, I'll give away trucks, I'll do this and this and this. I never, really, I never did them. But, um, you know, sat there a year and a half later, two years later, it's 2020. I was trying to build platinum still and I could not afford to get another, like a second machine, a second truck, a second trailer. And I'm like, dude, how, how am I going to do this? How, how, how do people grow their businesses and buy equipment in the, in the construction world? I mean, there's other things for truck shops and other businesses, right? Like, you know, t-shirt places, <laughs> you know, different businesses. But for construction, it was hard for me to understand and develop the idea of growing with iron. Because I was too young of a, of a kid to buy equipment with cash and didn't have enough capital. I could not get loans, not enough credit and history. And, and then straight up, the construction world, people don't really, um, not people, banks really kind of are, are different with the loan. And it's not really like normal equipment loans. Like it's, it's different. So um, usually it's a lot more expensive. So sitting there, long story short, I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there. I'm like, you know, dude, I should just give equipment away. You know, I was talking to my, my YouTube, making YouTube videos. Like, I should just give equipment away. And I was like, dude, I should just give away a truck for really here. Okay, call Chris. I'm like, hey, call Chris and one, one other buddy. And I'm like, hey, you just want to do it? I'm doing this. This is what I'm doing. I'm going to give equipment away. You want to do it? I don't need anybody's help. I'm down. Chris is like, dude, let's fucking do it. Okay, cool. Comes over to my house. Talk about it for a few, few days. And then uh, next thing you know, we were buying a truck. We are buying a trailer. We are buying a machine. And uh, bought a bunch of apparel and started doing giveaways and we haven't looked back and changed a lot of people's lives. And now that's what I do. I give equipment away and I help people start their journey in construction. Because you know the hardest part in construction is buying the equipment. It's not the idea. It's not putting the work in. It's not cutting the concrete. It's, it's literally getting the iron. That's the hardest part. To go save up $100,000 to go buy an F450 when you don't have a credit to go buy one. To go buy a piece of machine machinery like a skid steer that's forty fifty thousand dollars in cold hard cash it's hard i mean how you can do that right a trailer it's it's all it's a it's a jump start for 10 years for somebody so that's what we do tell me how Ombaugh started Ombaugh started um it initially started as an idea frank called me up said hey i got this crazy idea you want to do it um but about two years prior to that frank i and a couple other buddies sat down in my mom's office and uh saw what 8080 was doing and um, we're like wow that's super cool we're like we're all car guys so we're like maybe we should do a car giveaway and uh we started like crunching numbers with four people you know it just didn't really seem like it was gonna work um so we kind of let that die off but yeah frank called me one day um and said you want to do this i'm like I, at that time i was working uh, i just i just left a ford dealership selling cars i was working for our family's uh remodeling company interior exterior and he's like we should uh, do some sort of giveaway that'll you know like lead towards the blue collar people I'm like all right cool and then um we're like let's let's kind of do what we did we do what we know because we both did construction style stuff frank did the flat work um and we're like let's do like a truck trailer and some sort of machine so i think that afternoon frank called me i literally was like at his house in his parents basement and uh we bought a skid steer from Georgia from some random dealership, bought a trailer and a truck in a matter of, I want to say two days, and just literally dropped everything in our lives into this full scent own boss. Cause we, the name own boss came from like a joke. Us and our buddies would say, we'd be like, oh, doing something cool. Oh, that's own boss. Like do a burnout in the middle of an intersection. Own boss, don't care. Like go make a crazy decision, own boss. Like that was where the name came from. What's the next level of uh, Home Boss? Of oh, the giveaways, yeah. Um, it would probably be really incorporating knowledge into people and how they can actually use these things. I mean, I'm not going to start giving away Peterbilt's and semi trucks, and I mean, maybe if you guys really want that, but that's not where we're going to go with this because most people have no idea how to even run a skid steer and use this what we're doing now. So I don't know what they're going to do with the dump truck and a and a low boy, right? So eventually, maybe if enough people learn, enough people want it, sure. But right now. To be your own boss, you have a truck, you have a dually 450, 
you have a gooseneck, and you have a skid steer, like you can do a lot of things with that. And maybe you, if you're smart enough and you get business oriented enough, you don't even need to use the equipment. You can just rent it all out. And the next level, Mitch, you're asking is just to simply teach people how to use what we have supplied better. And that's it. And as simple as that. Or not even, even if you're not a winner, just to show people you can be your own boss is what we're, the next level of boss is. So, Perfect. yeah. Um, I guess for me, the next level of own boss would be showing people that being your own boss is just a mentality. It's a mentality shift. You have to be willing to go all in. You can't half-ass something. If you half-ass something, the response is going to be half-ass. It probably won't work out. Like, just like when Frank and I started own boss, it was all in all the time. Like when I say all in, it's nothing else matters at that time. If you want your company to be successful or if you want to make the next step, like you have to literally be all in. You can't have a bunch of distractions around you. You have to be all in. I guess just showing the world, like if you want to do something, it's possible. You had two young dudes that like barely knew how to run businesses prior to this and just went all in, like is life or death. You know, that's, that's what I want to show people. Like anything is possible if you go all in. The only way it's not going to work is if you don't go all in and cheat yourself. Because at the end of the day, if you cheat yourself, you, 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 that's the only thing. When you don't go all in, you're cheating yourself. You're giving yourself less. Steven, you've been here for a, a minute now. You've seen a lot of lives changed. What do you think most of these people are thinking when they get that call and they won one of these setups? What do you think they're thinking? What do I think the winners are thinking when they get the call? First, based off of all your comments, uh, it's not a scam or maybe, a, dude, it's, it's, it is true. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> I, I got clouded in judgment with that question because of running, doing all the social media and whatnot. But uh, I'd say like when, when they first get the call, winners are probably like, holy shit, like, this is real. It's happening. Like, you know, all the comments, all the stuff you read online, it's like easy to fall. It's easy to fall into that stuff and like believe what other people are saying or not. But honestly, for me, it's like the the genuine side of calling a winner is like, yo, we get to experience that. You know, Mitch and I behind the camera, um, we get to experience their reactions and then we sit down and edit it and we, you know, we're really watching their, their emotions go through um, their face and whatnot. And uh, for me, I think the, that they're they're really like, oh wow, like this is happening, it's real, they're excited, they're stoked out of their mind, and then, you know, reality hits, we get off the phone with them, and they're probably on the other side of the phone, like, oh shit, the old boss guy's called me, and, and, uh, and that too, they're, they're probably extremely jacked up, even more so than when we get them on the phone, but uh, um, I'd say that they're, they're excited, and, uh, you know, they're looking forward to, like, the experience of coming and picking up their new setup, and, uh, and, and just thinking about all the opportunity, um, to to have fun and experience that day with us and then uh, in the future after that they're probably for me I, I was just speaking on how i would think about it it's uh i would i would start to visualize like yo like this is this is gonna be real i'm gonna go pick that setup up and and uh take it home and then and and just be stoked out of my mind to, to change my life and start uh, you know having fun with it and you know we talk about it being own boss and, and starting entrepreneurial uh journeys for people and whatnot but like i'm an outdoorsman snowboarder extreme sports type of dude dude if i win a skid steer i get the call to win a skid steer i'm like shit i'm gonna go build some ramps i'm gonna i'm gonna go have fun with that skid steer i'm gonna enjoy it you know never mind making money right now like i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna do my thing with it first and foremost and then all right cool let's make a business <laughs> so you know for me I, i'd hope that's what the winner's thinking you know what i mean my first question for you mitchell is did you think after a Facebook post that you got tagged in, you would uh, have a three-year career? Yeah, no, that was uh, that was pretty crazy. I guess a little context behind that. Chris was uh, in college with one of my friends. Uh, they were roommates. He sent me over a post from Chris saying they're looking for a videographer and photographer. And I, uh, at that time, just picked up a small little point-and-shoot camera and uh, was taking some shots at like car shows and things like that, little family vacations. And yeah, I sent some work into them, took my mom's truck, uh, filmed the video and said, here's what I got. Do you guys like it? And uh, 
yeah, I guess it all started from there. So no, I did not see myself sitting here uh, three years later with an FX6 in my hand now and yeah, just mastering editing, trying to get better every day and learn something new and take this whole camera journey to the top. What kind of impact do I want from Own Boss to have on the world? It's a good question. I, the idea behind Own Boss is the name. I want people to understand that they don't have to be part of the system. They can go make their own money. They can do the things that they never thought they could do by simply pushing forward and being your own boss. And like you, listen, you can be your own boss. Like a good guy, a good guy I like to watch, shout out to you, dude, Cameron Haynes, okay? Cameron Haynes is his own boss, in my, in my opinion. That guy, he worked a normal job, and st I think he just quit it, but that guy worked a normal job for 30 years while running ultra marathons, while doing the craziest bow hunts ever. Like, that guy was still his own boss, even though he worked 9 to 5. So, own boss is just a mentality. And that's what we want to portray here at Own Boss. Spyco is just a mentality of, hey, I can do the shit that I want to do. I have 24 hours in a day. If I work my 9 to 5, 8 hour days at a normal job, and then after that, I'm out there moving dirt, I'm out there fixing houses, doing handyman, doing drywall, whatever it is. Doing something with your hands, not doing something on the internet. Being your own boss, it doesn't have to be in the construction world, it's everything. That's just what I know personally, is construction. So, that's what we want to do. We want you guys to be your own freaking boss. I want Own Boss to leave the impact of knowing that everything is based on your mentality and you can do whatever you want if you have the right mentality. If you have that Own Boss mentality, you can be your own boss, whether it's in business or just in life. Like. Own boss is a movement, not just a brand. Everybody should be their own boss of their life. Simple as that, whether it's, like I said, in business form, whether it's in your just personal life, doing the things that are going to benefit you and all the people that you care about. You know, it's it's all up to you. Just take control of your life and don't let other people control your life. All right, dude, so you're always you're always behind the camera. If you guys don't know if you're watching this, Steve is sitting there behind the camera with Mitch, post-production, editing, all this, he, they see the real raw reactions, the raw mess ups for me and Chris. They see everything raw, right? You guys, that's what you guys see. You see all the raw shit. When you're seeing all the rawness, what do you think that is completely overlooked from Chris and I, and from everybody else on the social side, like, in this business, in own boss specifically, what is over, what do you see like from the back end editor, gritty, like, 2 a.m. What do you see in that's left behind that, that no one else really sees? 2 a.m. is a good. Uh, 2 a.m. is a good point. I, I, I like that. Uh, you you guys see that? You know, this group of people we understand like the late nights, early mornings, and, and whatnot. We're actually sitting in a cabana uh, at Venice Beach area, or whatever this is, uh, down in Florida. And me and Mitch shot a little um, jogging segment this morning, and you know, definitely didn't want to get up. We've been hitting the gym hard this week. Um, and you know just feeling tired and, and whatever you got to push yourself but uh, it was worth it the sunrise was sick uh i got to literally stretch and do a i don't know like a kind of a half-ass workout and then jog up and down the beach for the shots but uh um i'd say what's overlooked is like um the experiences and the camaraderie that we do build being hard on each other and you know expecting a higher quality of life out of each other and you know holding each other accountable um not everybody has that and that's what own boss is about really you know like we're all bosses in our own right and and being able to um have that daily is reassuring it's uh it's a confidence builder it's positive for your own life and then you know we try to portray that on everybody else while keeping our mentals healthy and our emotions under control and uh, everything else that we do um but as far as little things that's overlooked, like, you know, people, you know, people don't get to see our day to day 100% of the time. So maybe we'll show you guys a little more of that um, in the future here and do a little more BTS stuff and whatnot. Um, but with that being said, the, the experience of Own Boss is probably overlooked just a touch. We try to show you guys what winter days are like, you know, we film them, we got a YouTube video and whatnot, but uh, I'd say just, just overlooking the little things of the experience of being a part of something like this and, and such a powerful movement and um you know maybe everybody doesn't fully understand you know what it's all about and whatnot but uh it's it's hard to it's hard to overlook it when you're in it when we're doing it when the late nights grinding mitch learning editing like a master in the, in the last couple of years and, and frank and chris you know um 
putting this all together and and making it enjoyable to work and you know perform and, and be at the next level so i'd say um i'd say try not to overlook that yourselves too you know the little things matter they really do what was the first point that you were like holy shit these guys are about it like <laughs> like when did that ha what happened when you're like oh god like they're they're for real about me um they think they're, they're they're putting they're putting it in we're just gonna fucking do it i gotta say i want to say it was like about a month or so we were sitting in there and they were looking at my camera like yeah no these 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 aren't the shots that we need and frank literally texted me while i was sitting at work building my wire harnesses and goes yeah well uh when you show up today you have a little surprise sitting in the office and i have i showed up in the office and i had a brand new camera a computer literally everything i needed to do my job and uh that was that was insane so i was uh Definitely knew it was real at that point. Hell yeah, I got chills thinking, I remember that. That, that, that was crazy. That was so much money too, like we, context guys, we didn't have money. Like it was, <laughs> there was no business money. It was me and Chris surviving and it was like a $4,000 camera. I'm like, oh shit, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully Mitch can cry and bro, I can see him in his eyes. So when you think of changing somebody's life, give you a vivid image, okay. Um, I look at it as a, a way to change someone's life is, it's off the concept of, that person just learned something that they can use the rest of their life. Because if I give you something like, yeah, it's cool, you're gonna win a truck. In 20 years, that truck's gonna rust out, that truck's gonna break down, the motor's gonna die in it. Materialistic things don't mean anything in life. It's not like, no matter what you have, I don't care, I don't look at, what well, you have Ferrari, I don't care what you have. Good for you, dude, like, I don't care. It's what you, it's your morals, what you learned, and how you can help change people's lives and, and make the world a better place. The knowledge you can you can give somebody and the grit, like it, it's just a different mentality. Like the mental fortitude to have understanding of how things work, that's what that's what that means to me. I got a question for you, Steve. I'm gonna preface this question with a little story. So, Own Boss has been in business for about three years now. We had no idea how to uh, get a good photo video guy when we started. Um, Frank had ran a camera a little bit for his YouTube stuff, but it's kind of hard to be on the other side when you're shooting ads. Thanks. So Frank goes, I got this guy. He used to shoot a TV show with me. Cool. <laughs> so we had uh, zero preparation, <laughs> zero crazy. anything. Frank uh. called Steve, and this was over three years ago at this point, and said, hey, come out and shoot some photos. Who, I guess my question now is, did you think that we would be in sunny Florida in the uh, last three years in business? And uh, how has the experience been? And what did your uh, onboarding look like with the company? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me start with the onboarding. Onboarding was was an experience in itself. It, you know, like, uh, hey, uh, are you still shooting video? I'm like, yeah, what's up? Uh, we got this thing. Uh, we, we want you to shoot one. Now. I'm like, all right, cool. And then, you know, from 2019, like Chris said, uh, when I first heard about Own Boss and, and how it was going to become a thing and whatnot, I'm like, yeah, it's flying around the country, doing our thing, this and that, making sweet videos, making cool content, like, sweet experiences, sounds like a plan. Um, but then I actually moved to Greensboro. <laughs> and, and then, like, a full year or two actually went by, and then uh, Frank called me again and was like, yep, yeah, that's when he asked, are you still doing video? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. So. It was seamless again shooting with Frank and the own boss crew and everything just you know fell right into place. So onboarding with the team was was a breeze and you know it felt like it fit right in. It's it's odd. Uh, I'd say we're a group of misfits for a reason and uh, I love that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's a there's a lot of moving parts and recently we've gotten really organized and we got schedules down and we got you know certain time frames to hit and and stuff to shoot and um, it's really dialed now and it feels good to see the progress back from um, I'm sure some of you guys might know Grey Gold on Frank's old YouTube channel that's the TV show that Chris is referencing um, that was a lot of fun to shoot that was new for me you know I'd go from shooting a wedding or just shooting car photos or whatever you know personal stuff because photography and videography was a hobby for me that I just got good at and uh, had fun with and whatnot and then it transitioned into meeting people on YouTube and doing all this crazy stuff that, you know, honestly never thought I'd be doing. Um, so that is, that's a pretty sweet feeling and uh, it's pretty, it's, it's, 
it's awesome to see the progress made there and uh, relationships built and future business being planned and other stuff falling into place. So the progress and the process behind it is a beautiful thing and it's felt great. Um, there was one other part to the question. Uh, yeah, like what's, I guess, what is the, uh, what's it been like going through the, the ropes of being here for almost two years now? Like what, how, like what progressions, progressions, like enjoyable experiences, things along those lines? Not enjoyable experiences, the chaos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Real, real, uh, what it takes to do what we do is, I mean, it's not that easy, right? Yeah, It's no. not an easy process to I mean, you go buy something. It's a huge, 100%. Deal. You guys do a lot of the. Backup stuff. Yeah. It's a huge, you guys' job is very, very crucial to yep. how this is portrayed on the internet. Yeah. So, I mean, a great example is literally right now, um, this week, we, you know, we get the setups clean and detailed and we make sure that it's looking mint for you guys and we keep them in tip top shape and whatnot. And this week got uh, not chaotic, but it, it just kind of uh, time frames got pushed around a little bit and schedules had to change and uh, we moved some. Uh, we moved some work around and we had a detailer we we're working with and you know you gotta show up and, and detail the truck in the dark sometimes and you know we respect that about guys for showing up and doing some work and but then things happen where you know it's not up to our standard the work um, the work doesn't get done to a, to a certain extent and then you know you gotta you gotta be real in that situation and address the situation and, and be transparent with the people you're working with and understand that like shit happens right and you need to be you know genuine and have some grace with that and learn how to communicate and work with people and understand that you know they're 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 bending over backwards for you to do some work sometimes and you know respecting their time and their uh skill sets and where they're at in life is also important because we're all we all start at different points and we all are at different points right now and that's true for the whole unbossed team and uh, that's part of the beauty behind the scenes is you know coming into this with I don't know how long I've had a camera in my hand, uh, but coming into this with like a ton of experience in the woods, filming deer, hunting, weddings, birthdays, cars, anything I can imagine, I'd point at a camera at, you know what I mean? Um, but coming into it with that experience for me and, and, and knowing that I was coming in to work with a guy that just started with the company and uh, Mitch, he's nodding his head behind the camera right now. It's pretty, it's pretty uh, beautiful to see the growth in a man that just literally went from making wire harnesses and whatnot right for an electrical company to 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 literally talking this morning mitch word for word said i don't know how i got so lucky to have the opportunity to film with this company but uh i, I don't know how you said that but you wouldn't change it for the world yeah. you know and it, that's true like that is that's real grit that's uh for you detroit lions fans bunch of psychos uh that is real grit that's in your face reality like um like i talked about having grace with people and understanding where they're at in life. That's that's part of the process of teaching and learning and cultivating healthy relationships. And, you know, I could go back to coaching high school volleyball. I, I had a bunch of freshman girls, um, phenomenal athletes. They listen well. I, I think if you're an athlete, you understand that women run plays like they're robots. They, we all have girlfriends and whatnot, and uh, I consider them a little robotic, for sure. <laughs> Don't care. Uh, but, you know, with that being said, it's like it's a beautiful thing to see the process. And uh, bringing up coaching is where I was going with that is is watching at the end of a season, the smiles on people's face, knowing they sweat their ass off in the gym. The smiles on our faces after sweating our ass off this summer in Florida was very fulfilling. You know, we knew what we were in for sometimes and we still went through the motions. We went to a truck meet and it was 105, 110 degrees over in Miami and we still filmed, you know, we went through we went through some crazy stuff together this year, and um, it just shows that the process can be ugly and beautiful all at the same time. So, Hondo P. Lit. Cool. Was that good? <laughs> yeah. What was the experience from quitting a stress super like long term normal opportunity job. normal to, to this? Yeah. Dealing with us. Yeah, so I mean, I guess I always saw myself as like a little nine to five person and just doing some of the extra uh, stuff that I like to do on the side. Um, but yeah, making that full transition, I was like, this is it. This is what I want to do. Um, talked to my parents, told them how I felt about everything. And they were like, if, if you're passionate about it, if you want to do it, just go do it. So next day I kind of told my job, I have two weeks left here and that's it and i walked out the door and yeah never really looked back after that are you scared i was a little scared but at the same time it's like 
I I saw what we were doing and at that time it was around OB4 so like I like things were starting to like get real traction and I was like this is this is going to be it like I know this is going to go to the next level and I want to help them take it there um so yeah here we are. <laughs> what does a successful life look like to me? Well, a successful life to me looks like doing things that I enjoy at my own leisure within reason. When I say that, I mean like I enjoy doing business things, you know, being able to work, whether it's six o'clock in the morning before everybody's up and being able to respond to emails without getting a bunch of phone calls or being able to get my important stuff done before a lot of people wake up, or it's being able to leave on a Thursday afternoon with my family to go up north, go to the drag strip, uh, anything I enjoy, going over to Silver Lake Sand Dunes. Success to me is freedom, being able to spend time with family and being able to have a really good team around me, whether it's a team of friends or a team of coworkers that always have the support for you. And when I say team, I mean my family as well. In every direction, if I need to leave something, I always know I have good people that have my back so like that the freedom of being able to hey it's tuesday afternoon and somebody's in the hospital i have a great group of people that can support me in every direction so i know that i can go out and do those things where i guess for me not being successful would be having to miss certain things because i don't have a good surrounding of people around me they can't have my back at all times i'm a big team person so having a great team in all three aspects friends family and work is super important to me. That uh, that defines success in life. Would I ever give away an excavator again? Um, yes, if you guys really liked it. I personally, I've ran a lot of excavators. I've ran a lot of I've ran skid more. The power of the excavator, right? So there's cool things with that, right? Excavator, you can dig holes, you can do some trenches, you can do pipe work if you're electrical, you can pull some lines out. Trench work, it's sweet. You can even excavate, you know, some construction materials like concrete. You can move some piece of logs around and and maybe you know push some trees the top of trees down but realistically excavators are really good for digging that's what they're made for uh skid steers on the other hand they're a track loaded machines so the weights dispersed across i mean well art skid steers are tracks you can get wheel as well which i've ran more than tracks but uh the track skid steers are the weights dispersed off the two tracks obviously so you go on grass you're not tearing it up completely destroying it like it's not a narrow track it's a big machine bigger wider track you're not making as much ruts um and you can move with them, you can kind of dig with them, you can cut trees down, you can load, you can push, you can pull. Very versatile machines. So, going back to it, escalators, would I give another one away? Yeah, maybe, if someone really wanted one, but I'd prefer skid steers because I think they're a way more generalized machine. So, maybe, it's a question. Sick. What does Frank Licaria do for fun? What does Frank Licaria do for fun? Wow, that's a hard one to answer. Um, I like car stuff, I like guns. Mostly I like, I like to learn random crap, if I'm honest. It's just like, I'm a big nerd, dude, I really am. The more I learn about it, I'm like, wow. I like, like, don't get me wrong, I like being an idiot. I like shooting stuff, I like doing burnouts in cars and being being wild and being dumb dirt bikes, but realistically, like, just fun for me is, first of all, communicating with people that are like-minded, like people, like talking to somebody and understanding how their brain works and like just kind of picking it apart, and that's fun, but also learning how that brain works is even more fun to me. So, mostly learning stuff, if I'm honest. Like, just whatever that could be. And it can be fun learning, like learning how to do a burnout properly. And Chris can show me how to do that. I don't know, I've never done it before. Like, that shit's fun. So, yeah, I'm boring. You're your own boss. My own boss, dude. My own boss can do whatever they want. That's right, you can do whatever you want when you're fun, Chris. Chris likes to play on Facebook, my shit. Hey, well, he's not even listening, he's not even listening. Oh, he's listening. There he is. I was waiting for you to look up and be like, I'm good. We're good.